So sometimes there can happen a situation where the employees of the subsidiary are given option to subscribe the shares of parent enterprise. It is the parent who is giving the shares, but it is the employee of the subsidy. Where is the employee cost recognized in the subsidy? But whose shares are being diluted? Parent enterprise. Now this becomes a very interesting contention. Let's take this with the help of an example. Let's say for example, I have a situation where a parent enterprise and there is a subsidy. To the employees of the subsidiary, employees of S, the options are given by parent options of parent. Where is the employee cost recognized? The employee cost should be recognized in subsidiary. The equity shares are flowing from the parent enterprise to the employee while the employee cost recognized in the subsidiary. Therefore, you will have to recognize a transaction between the parent and the subsidiary. What is the transaction which I will record? To the extent of fair value of shares issued, I will record it as an investment in the subsidiary in the books of parent. Fair value of shares is equal to investment in subsidiary. Which will be recorded by the parent enterprise. Subsidiary will also record something. Subsidiary, because they have issued, they have taken the shares from the parent to be issued to their employees, they will recognize it as other equity. Let me give you an example to explain this situation. Let's say, for example, the parent has offered about, uh, let's say, 1000 shares of parent enterprise to employees of the subsidiary. at the rate of an exercise price of 50 rupees per option. Let's say the fair value of option is rupee 20. In such situation, if I have to go for a recording for this transaction, how do you record? Look at the books of P limited. P will record this entry as like this. To equity share capital. To securities premium. debit bank account debit to the extent of 50 rupees 50 rupees on 1000 options is 50000 1000 shares of 10 rupees each is 10000 but don't forget there is a loss to the company for for approximately 20 rupees this loss to the company should be recorded as investment in P. Why am I debiting investment in P limit or investment in S? Because the cost will be actually recognized by the subsidiary. So therefore P cannot debit the provision. The provision is in the books of subsidiary only. Therefore investment in S 
to the extent of 20,000, 20 rupees of 1,000 shares. Therefore, 60,000 is my securities premium. Similarly, what will S Limited record? S Limited will record staff cost or your expenses, employee benefit expense, account debit. How much will they record? The staff cost is how much? To the extent of the fair value of option, that is 20,000. But they did not issue the share. So you cannot credit to your share capital. Therefore, I will present it as other equity. In other equity, I'll present it. And the value to be presented in other equity is 20,000. Here. Let's say for suppose, subsidiary is reimbursing the parent enterprise to the extent of 50% of cost. How will your entry change if subsidiary is reimbursing the parent, parent enterprise to the extent of 50% of cost? If that situation happens, instead of this 50,000, it will become 60,000. 50 which I received from the employee, 10 by which I received from the subsidiary. My investment in subsidiary will now be only 10 because out of the fair value, 50% is reimbursed by the subsidiary and only 10 rupees will be the cost. And if I look at this cost, staff cost is 20,000 rupees, correct? But I'll also record to bank 10,000 and this will be only 10,000. This would be my situation if I am saying 50% of the cost is reimbursed by the subsidiary to the parent enterprise. Here, so this is one more adjustment which comes up. Whenever I am talking the parent is issuing the shares or issuing options to the employees of the subsidiary as a share based payment option. Clear?